let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Godliness with contentment. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, a Buddha, supernatural teacher. First lesson. Then first lesson Timothy, first Timothy chapter six, verse six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Second lesson Philippians chapter four. Verse 12, I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Golden text, Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. The foundation stone. Quote, Brethren, listen to the word of God. If the word of God were to have the beginning or the end, this gospel would be called the foundation stone. This is the beginning and the end as far as the word of God is concerned. What else can you do if you do not practice this gospel? Any other thing that you do apart from this gospel means waste of time. If you read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but do not practice this gospel, you are wasting your time. If you dream like Daniel or Joseph, but this gospel is not manifested in your life, then you are dreaming in vain. Who is he who overcomes the world? He is the person who has mortified the flesh with its lusts and desires. He is the person who overcomes the world. Your problem is that you go to church so that you may prosper or that you may have a child and a car. You have scored zero. You have failed. You may come into this world and begin to name what you want to be. That you want to be a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, a millionaire. You have failed because you are a rogue and a robber. When you are a child, you are asked, what do you want to become? Sometimes you say you want to be a millionaire. Another person will want to be a doctor and another a professor. All of you are wanted persons. You are serving Satan. You are witnesses that the black man's hand was not corrupt, even though they were warriors. The whites have completely corrupted you since they are greedy people. When the whites did not come with their government, there was no money and we lived by barter. When you give me firewood, I will give you water. When you give me water, I give you food. I give you child. You even exchange children there was no problem at that time you would hear that a certain person and 40 had 40 slaves he did not buy them with money sometimes he used bananas to exchange for a person's child that was all today before you are made a chief or a royal highness you will pay over six thousand naira otherwise you will not be kept but Esau sold his own for a pottage of lentils can you not realize that Esau was hungry and so he told Jacob to feed him with red pottage 
Jacob refused except on the condition that Esau sold his birthright. Esau thought over it and asked what profit his birthright will bring to him as he was so hungry that he was at the point of death. He thus sold his birthright unto Jacob. Reflect on your first lesson. Jacob was a white man and Esau was a black man. If Jacob was satisfied with his position, would he tell Esau to swap position with him? If Esau was satisfied with his position, would he sell it for a plate of pottage? After all, what is hunger? It can only swell your head, but it cannot kill you. But what comes next after hunger? <coughs> Excuse me. Man's tendency to instability. You have heard what the first lesson says. The greatest gift a person has is satisfaction with one's position. If Esau was satisfied with his position, he would have <coughs> told Jacob what to do with his pottage. He would have damned it. There would not have been any problem. What was the cause of the downfall of our parent Adam? It was because he was not satisfied with the position in which God had kept him. In the beginning, God created only one person, Adam. After creating him, Adam was the person who complained of loneliness and asked God to give him a companion. If he was satisfied with his position, the question of his fall would not have arisen. After all, loneliness does not kill. He complained that he was going to die of loneliness, even though there were other creatures like birds and animals around him. He did not know the thought of God. To have a partner, Adam had to die. Whatever comes from God is not evil. But what comes from the lust of the flesh is evil. God did not create Adam and Eve together. He first of all created Adam and Adam asked for a companion. There was no alternative than for Adam to die. You have heard that Adam fell into a deep sleep. Deep sleep means that God killed him. Because Christ has said, except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But when it dies, it brings forth plenty of fruits. God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep and then remove one of his ribs to create Eve. Adam's spirit died because the first Adam was from the earth, but the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. If Adam did not die, he would have remained alone. But when he died, his spirit multiplied and filled the whole world. God gave Adam a partner and told him to eat of all the fruits of the trees in the garden except one. God warned them that the day they would eat of that fruit of the tree, they would die because it was the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If it were Adam alone, he would not have eaten the forbidden fruit because he was made personally by God. But Eve was a collection of parts. And so the fullness of Godhead was completely absent from her. That was why she easily succumbed to Satan's lure. She felt that she felt and brought all her desires into the fruit, and that was forbidden her. Why did God advise that they should not eat of this fruit? You can imagine her lust taking form, the gluttony in her 
brought her to eating the fruit. You heard that the serpent deceived Eve. It was no ordinary serpent. It was her desire which she transferred to the fruit. As you are sitting here, your desire is in a certain young man or woman. That is what is called greed. That is the serpent's greed. Why it is called a serpent is that it is very unpredictable in its movement. As you are sitting here, your mind has wandered to America, to India and around the world. While you are still sitting here, that is why we read that it is not what enters into the body that defies a man, but what comes out of him. For out of the heart proceed all thoughts, all evil thoughts, fornication, theft, anger, adultery, drunkenness, and these are what defile the man. When greed lured Eve into eating the fruit, she also took same to her husband, and both of them ate, and their eyes were opened. When God came to Adam in the cool of the day, he called Adam and asked, Adam, where are you? Adam ran and hid himself. God called Adam and asked again, where are you? Adam said he heard God's voice and hid himself. God asked him, why did you run? Adam replied that it was because he was naked. God asked Adam, who told him that he was naked? Have you eaten of the fruit that I warned you? Adam answered that it was the woman God gave to him that ate and gave same to him. Do you realize that when he was alone, he did not eat of the fruit? If he was satisfied with his position, he would not have eaten the fruit. But now he is complaining that the woman, God, the woman God gave to him caused him to eat. Our first lesson shows that godliness and the fear of God is the person who is satisfied in the position God has kept him. If Adam was satisfied with his loneliness, there would have been no problem in the world today. It is said that a child that walks circumspectly will kill that which killed his father, but he that is careless will be killed by what killed his father. What is the position today? Is it not what killed your father that is killing you today? You say that Adam was, now, was not good, but what about you? Are you good? Be content with what you have. Child, be satisfied with your position. Which of you is satisfied with his position? If we were to be satisfied with the position which God has kept us, there would be no problem or temptation whatsoever for us. Now that you are blaming Adam, are you not deceived? Is the serpent not deceiving you even to this moment? I am referring to your greed and lust. That girl is very beautiful. Oh, look at that young man. That house should be mine. How much did you pay for that shirt? Do you see your position? It is worse than Adam. At all times, your prayer is on the Lord's table. When the Father does one thing for you, that is when you will have peace. When he does, if you will ask for another. Until the earth passes away, you will never be satisfied. That is your problem. And when he does not comply with your greedy request, you become troubled in mind. When are you going to be sat when are you going to be steadfast with God? There is no hope of steadfastness with you. Man's unending ambitions. You want to study French. You have you are you alone want to study Latin, German, Arabic and Igbo languages. At what time will you finish learning these? What are you going to do with them? Which 
One, will you speak finally? Tell me. You want to be a, a tourist visiting America, Europe and all the important cities of the world. After you have toured all these, where do you end? You will remain in one city alone. What then is your gain except perdition? Now that we are sitting here, if an airplane lands and invite those who want to go overseas to join it, I alone will remain here. I really know this and I have seen this one vision very clearly. All of you will be struggling to get in without knowing where you are being taken. What is new in it? What is there in America? If another airplane comes and says they are going to heaven, I alone will be left behind. All of you will join and sing in unison. That great day has come. I will wait here for you until you return from your heaven. Already I am in heaven and this one is sufficient for unto me. That is what I use in overcoming the entire world. To be carnally minded is death. And so brethren, for you to own a car and be a chief, do not profit you anything. But the person who is satisfied with the position which God has placed him is the person who has gained. He is the person who has received instruction and he has overcome the world. Brethren, there is pleasure and great joy and peace in contentment. The glory and honor that is in it can never be expressed in words. Any person who is contented with the position God has placed him is greater than a person who gains much in her trade. And another who is made the chief of a community, his glory is greater than all glories. That is the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ overcame the world. He said to his disciples, I will no longer speak with you because the ruler of this world is coming, but he shall find nothing in me. I am asking you now, if the ruler of the world comes to your heart, will he not find something there? If our Lord Jesus Christ was not satisfied with the position God has kept him, when Satan told him that if he would bow down and worship him, he would give him all the kingdoms of the world and its glory, would our Lord Jesus, would our Lord Jesus not have bowed down to Satan? If our Lord Jesus Christ was not satisfied with his position, when Satan told him to turn the stone into bread, if he were the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ would have quickly prayed to God to change the stones into bread. Read this first lesson again. First lesson, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Do not invest your love in anything. Sometimes when you sing a particular song, you say that I love that song very much. How can that be? Is the song as the place I am? Why should I love a song? As a teacher, I have to show an interest in everything so as to bring you up. What have I to do with any song in itself? There is nothing I love other than the position I am. My position is sufficient unto me. I seek no other. No condition is permanent. I have never asked God for money or children. What am I going to do with them? I have what surpasses everything. I am satisfied with the position God has kept me. I do not seek for any other glory. Whatever he gives is his own. I have no problem. If God decides to take whatever he gave me back, I will not ask for it because I did not ask for it. I am telling you these things plainly because as the saying goes, 
I use, I live, I use a live tortoise to consult my oracle. You have seen my exemplary life with your eyes, but that way you all are taking lack of contentment is too far and it is the wrong way brethren as a man of god learn to live within the position god has placed you with contentment do not seek for any other position because these are the things that disturb your mind the moment your heart is disturbed you are dead completely but once your mind is calm you have no problem whatsoever it is said that no condition is permanent today you may be wealthy tomorrow you become poor sometimes people love you later on they do not love you anymore today you are sick tomorrow you are healthy do you not realize the sacrosanctity of the dictum that no condition is permanent therefore remain where you are and be satisfied with the condition you find yourself learn to live alone and learn to live with people do not say you want to live with many people and do not say you do not want to live with many people when many people come live with them but bear in mind that one day you will be alone when you are alone live and know that tomorrow you will have company these are the secrets and so do not trouble yourself any longer a messenger does not propound riddles all of us are the messengers of god he can remove you from the midst of many people he can also take you into the company of plenty of people the only advice for you is to be content with any position you find yourself do not ask questions your mistakes are many the first mistake is that you claim that you are the master of yourself that someone is your wife certain persons are your children you also claim this is my land and house and property this is a big mistake god is bringing to your understanding that heaven and earth and the fullness thereof belongs to him he owns you and the land you do not own anything what did you bring into the world what will you take out of it if you had this understanding you would be quite satisfied with your position do not aspire to any position everything will pass away but god abides forever people come and go but he abides forever as god and brethren let your coming here not be in vain because if you have been here for 20 years without mortifying the flesh your being here for these years means nothing you gain nothing when you want to be a prophet or a pastor or a christ student or an elder or an or a christ servant or a cloister or a crusader or any other officer where will these land you they will lead you to destruction with pleasure be content with your position the position that profits you is to be satisfied with your position wherever you are be contented do not ask questions do not tell god that you need anything neither complain about your position i am telling you that if you are satisfied with the position god has kept you if you are absolutely satisfied with any situation you find yourself even if you are put inside fire you will not know that you are in fire it will be like you are in heaven when you what when you are put inside water you are still in heaven every time you are with the father you have no problem remember shadrach and his two friends who were put inside fire did the fire burn them 
The fire did not burn them because they were satisfied with their position. Remember Daniel also who was put in the den of lions. But since he was in heaven, the beasts did not devour him. The lions were rather friendly with him. When God is with you, no matter where you are, even where people complain to be a very difficult place, you have no problem. I am telling you what I have witness myself you complain that a particular place is bad but in my own case i am always in heaven wherever i am do not worry about me worry about yourself because i have no problem you can go to number eight eaton street calabar where it was supposed to be that brotherhood started but brotherhood did not start there Brother who started before the foundations of the world were laid. We were completely satisfied with number 8 Eaton Street. When we were at Biakpan, we were also satisfied. And so, every time and at every place, we are contented with our position. All places are the same. You have seen that there is no good road in Biakpan. But I have never complained that there is no good road. How did I get there in the first place? Tell me how I got to be a pan. Or again, how did I move out of it? I have never complained about roads in be a pan. But you worry over that, over what does not belong to you. Did God not know that there is no good road to be a, to be a pan? Does he not know? that there is also road there too. Everything that God does do not involve you. Allow him to handle it the way he pleases. This kingdom belongs to God. It is neither yours nor mine. It is neither of the world nor of any person. But the Father owns everything. You cannot question him. You cannot criticize him that he has done this instead of that. All your insolence arises from your loss and that is what leads you to destruction. Let the second lesson be read. Second lesson, Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. That is what Satan has used in overcoming the sons of men. At any time, he will place something before you and ask you to have it. And if you are a greedy person, you have it and fall. If you will receive the lesson of today, and abide in it, you have overcome Satan, you have overcome the whole world, you have overcome all spirits and even the angels. Nothing flaps its wings. The benefit of the brotherhood pulpit. Do you know why many people fall away from brotherhood? When the brotherhood pulpit was not yet introduced on the television, the whole world used to cogitate that the leader was dressed in a way commensurate with his fame. They thought that his dress was not made out of any worldly materials or even tailored by man. Or maybe his hat extends from one end of the wall to the other. That was why the world was sensified but when the father appeared on the television every person was tongue-tied before the civil war two pastors came here to see me they were arguing that no person ever sees the father while the other was arguing that the father can be seen and so they came to see me when they arrived we sat down together and the other one was so tongue-tied he commented that people had told him that the leader was never seen 
I told him that he has seen him before. How can I not be seen? Am I a ghost or a mermaid? The leader is content with his position. Even when I come down from the pulpit, you do not see me with any shoes or hat on my head. But in your case, when you leave the place, another person will come to us, come to you to ask, Why are you so poor? He will tell you how your leader is very rich. You can now realize how Satan has deceived you. Can you not realize that the gift I possess is the greatest? I do not desire for anything. I am satisfied with my position. I have no problem. You may go and look for money and high position. I am here waiting for you. I am more than satisfied with my position. You are witnesses that when the headquarters at number 26 embark road and as a matter of fact, it still remains the headquarters. The place, as you know, is very small. I was really satisfied with the place. Apart from the holy mother who, re who renovated the place, I would have been satisfied with my position. You can see where the secretariat is standing now. It was a small touch house. But look at it now. In whatever form it was built, I cannot be worried. Even as I was not worried when it was not built, I am not interested in anything. I am already satisfied with my position. I am asking you, if the whole world is brotherhood and you are not satisfied in the place you are kept, what then will be your gain? You know that the church dignitaries have got everything. All the heads of church denominations you find around are very wealthy. But what is their gain? What do they gain from wealth if they are not satisfied with their position? The first important thing is, is that godliness with contentment is great gain. Apart from that, you are heading for destruction. The churches built hospitals, tr trained nurses, trained sisters and mothers. They are famous and popular, but what is their gain? Is that what they were sent to do? After all, you are one. You have one head, one mouth, and one spoon. No matter what, you can only sleep in one house and on one bed and on one pillow. Why do you then worry yourself? What are you going to do with all these things you are claiming? I do not condemn motor vehicle. I do not condemn the aeroplane. I do not condemn the bicycle. I do not condemn anything. But I am warning you to be satisfied and contented with your position with joy. Do not complain. Since we are slaves, slaves do not speak in parables. Let us wait in the Lord. If he brings us an aeroplane, we shall fly. If he gives us a bicycle, we shall ride. And if he gives us food, let us eat. If he says we should stand outside, let us stand outside. That is the secret. Do not complain. Do not tell him that you want to stand outside or that you want to be inside the house so that what happened to Adam and Eve may not befall you. As I am telling you this, if you bring food to me and it happens that there is no salt in it, I will never request for salt. I will eat it without salt. If you tell me that there is no water around, I will neither desire to have a bath or desire a drink. Even for three days, if I do not thirst, I do not bathe, I am still very, very happy. If I go to a place and they tell me that there is no toilet around, I will tell them that it is all right. Even if I stay there for one week, I will not answer to the call of nature. 
I am very happy. I love the kind of, I love that kind of place. And so, if you do not learn to endure every situation, how can you survive? Can you be a man of God? Can you please God? How would God be God if he were to rely upon man? He created man and then called, called him to come and help him and serve him. But man has turned to another thing. Man turns to fight against God. Have you heard him answering you a word? He does all his things alone. It is you who have problems. He continues to give us food and clothing and life as God. Whether you thank him or not, he is not disturbed. Whether you pay, whether you pray or not, he is not bothered. Whether you acknowledge him or not, he is not worried. He continues with his work. If he were not satisfied with himself, he would have asked, Why is it that man does not worship him? And so he would have a troubled mind. Right from the beginning, he keeps man to superintend over his creation. He has no problem. If it were you, you would have no need for man. You would have loved to govern your business alone. God is satisfied with his position. He has not a troubled mind and he has no problem. All over the world, people have been praying and asking for God to come. Many people have proclaimed themselves God's People have hailed and worshipped them, yet God is not disturbed. If it were you, you would want to manifest your glory alone. God is satisfied with his position. That is what he has left for you. No matter what you do, he does not leave his seat. He is satisfied with his position. God occupies his position as the creator. He keeps another one as his king and the other for his children. There is no other order apart from this. He has no regrets. He does not want another position apart from this one. In your case, you are always struggling for a position. There is no person who is satisfied with the position God has placed him. When you see one person, you want to be like him. When you see anything, you want to own it. And so you have become satanic. What time do you have to serve God the Father? You pray. Father, even though it is said that we should not ask you for anything, I am asking for only one thing. Give me the ability. Have you not failed? Oh, now we are in the Pentecostal. You can see how scanty the great all is. Have you ever heard me pray? that God should bring in people to fill the hall. What are they coming to do? This is number. This number is enough. If people do not come and the great hall is empty, it's all right. If the hall is full, it does not make any difference. Once you are satisfied with the position God has kept you, that is all. You are in heaven with the Father. You say that somebody has disturbed you by taking your money or your wife. No person has defrauded you. It is greed that has lured you away. Have you not told somebody that you want one thing or the other? You even put it into prayer that you want that one thing. And so when it comes, it will tell you, this is what you have been looking for somebody will give you a vision that he has seen you with a long envelope and because you have been praying for money a man comes to your house and asks if you are the person he is looking for you answer yes the man will say that you are very fortunate that you are very fortunate because he has come for you he begins to give certain prospective idea which will bring you money and you begin to thank God that your 
vision is coming true. Why is it that you are not wise enough to the understanding that you did not bring anything into the world, neither will you take anything out of the world, since you have what to eat and wear, and even when you do not have what to eat today, what you are yesterday was enough, even as Pharaoh was told that there would be plenty in seven years and famine in the next seven years, I would not be disturbed. When there is food, we eat. What's, when famine comes, I do not bother. I do not store anything. I do not ask God for anything. I will only leave everything to the Father. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 7, if we believe that God has an appointed time for everything, we would not trouble ourselves. To everything there is a season, and a time, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stone and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to loss, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to reap and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. In all these you have no hand in it. When that time comes, rejoice. When things are bad, it is meant to usher in what is good. Do not ask questions other than that. Be always satisfied with what you have. Our Lord Jesus Christ left his heavenly throne and came down to earth, but he was laughed at and derided. They took him as a demented person who had nothing to do. Our Lord Jesus Christ was abused and disgraced, but he did not worry. He was satisfied with his own position. He did not ask for earthly glory. At one time when our Lord Jesus Christ fed the people, they wanted to make him king, but he ran and hid himself. If it were you, you would have thanked the Father. No, you want to be made the chief launcher. When you have, you will always be invited to every function. They will call you to come and take your position. You will be made the chief launcher at every occasion. When you have no money again, they will not sing for you. Even when you ask for the position, they will tell you, you sit down with your one cobra. Yesterday, you used to take your position. Today, another person takes it. Is that a source of anger to you? You have finished displaying your glory. Give chance to another person. Whenever God gives you money or wealth, use it in serving him with all humility. When he does not give you again, sit still and thank him with humility. Do not trouble yourself because you did not create yourself. If you cannot pay your tithe, God knows that you do not have, and he does not require it from you. If you cannot attend a function, God knows that he has not given you the ability if you do not have what to eat in the day, he knows that he has not given food to you. Why do you worry yourself? Why do you go to beg? Why do you go to disgrace yourself to show that, that he is the all-wise God? He says you should give one-tenth of all your gain. If you have ten naira, as you gain, you give one naira to him. The other nine 
belongs to him. The other nine belongs to you. But when he does not give you even one naira, he says that he who has two coats should give one to him who has none. And so, if you do not have another person will bring to you, what do you lose? Why do you trouble yourself? It is exactly what is obtained in this world. When you are rich, you have many people to help. But when you have nothing, people will be charitable to you. That is how God has ordained it. It is not a question of lamenting and weeping. It is not something you should go and steal. It is not something you should attribute to witchcraft or juju. It is not every day. That is Christmas. Christmas is once a year, the 25th of December alone. But what about the other days? Let the golden text be read again. Golden text Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Brethren, what has been read to you is the first requirement in this kingdom. No one would first of all.